Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time on K4 Shrine between Kron Aberrant and God. Kron Aberrant is starting out in the northeast corner of the map, and God starting out in the southwest corner of the map. And God apparently likes the color green. Oh, never mind. Color green is the player two slot. Because I like the color green. And also because... Actually, I'm not sure why I have it on the four-player map. Green is the two-player slot. Anyway, both players starting out as Grekum from the looks... No, Grekum versus CISO. God's starting out as CISO, but God frequently will start as CISO, and then after he's finished scouting, will change to Grekum. So I expect he'll be doing the same thing here. I don't expect he'll actually be staying as CISO for any time. But be under, it would be interesting if he did. I would kind of like to see something other than a Grekum mirror. Because Grekum mirrors are very common, and it's nice to have some variety. But it looks like Cryonburn is going to be... He's going to be sticking to Grekum. He always plays Grekum, so that's normal. But just, God... God can play anything. So, I kind of hope he plays something other than Grekum. I hope he sticks to CISO. Anyway, God doing a scouting, and Cryonburn also... Actually, also not... No, he's not going for scouting. He's setting up some octaves, which will probably be used for scouting. Since K4 Shrine is a four-player map with starts along the corners, it's... Not unlikely is just waiting for the Octos first, and that's exactly what he's doing. So, both players will be able to scout each other out pretty quickly, and God will be able to find out where Carnavern is first, with his Akron no less, so God now knows where Carnavern is, and Carnavern now has to, well, deal with the fact that God is probably playing CISO, but like I said, not unlikely that God will just go back and change the race. He even has, he has the time even bookmarked, so he's definitely planning on changing to Grekum. So, that is... Wait, commercial break? What? There... There's... There's commercials on my Twitch channel? I'm... I'm not partnered or anything with commercials on my Twitch channel. That's... Okay. So, I apologize to anyone watching the stream. Apparently, Twitch TV puts commercials on streams without... The stream... The person who who has the stream, who's doing the stream actually knowing about it, or getting any money from it. Like, I mean, granted, I do have permission to do this stuff, to actually make money off these casts from advertisements. I did ask Hazard about that. But, still, I don't want ads unless I actually want ads. And I don't want ads yet. Okay, well, that's... That is good to know. Anyway, so... God is switching to Grekum. As I mentioned before, God is switching to Grekum. And in case you're wondering, the YouTube casts do not have commercials. I don't have commercials on my channel. They shouldn't have commercials anyway. I don't have them on the channel because I don't want to annoy the viewers. I don't have a huge amount of subscribers and I don't get a huge amount of views in the videos. I don't want to annoy the viewers I have. If I had like 10,000 or 100,000 subscribers or viewers, then I'd be more willing to have commercials. Then it, it would kind of be worth it. But not for a few hundred. So... Yeah, no commercials for now. That I don't know why Twitch is doing that. That's really bizarre. Anyway, God has... Like I said, he switched to Grekum. He had lost his Akron in Cranberry's base, but that was a CISO Akron, so that really doesn't matter. Once the blue time comes along, God's being Grekum will propagate towards... Well, propagate towards the playable time that Cranberry is playing with. And Cranberry actually is going to be scouting out. He will see that... God is Grekum now, and not CISO. So yeah, God is definitely taking advantage of my advice of... Gosh, it wasn't my... It wasn't even my idea. It was another... It was some new player who came in and did this. Of start with CISO, then change to Grekum. Because that does work really well. And in case you're wondering, and with Twitch TV, no, I don't think logging in changes advertisement status. I really am not sure. Like I said, as far as I was aware, advertisements didn't happen unless you actually set up your channel as some sort of partnership program with Twitch. Just mainly because of, like, I'm actually concerned for legal reasons. Like, Akron isn't a problem, but if I were to cast other games, then that could be a major legal concern. That's actually really worrying to me. But I digress. YouTube, however, thankfully, is respectful of my desire not to have commercials and therefore not be possibly liable under any sort of copyright or Creative Commons non-commercial claim. Yes, I worry about this a lot. It's 
unfortunately important. Anyway, with... So, Crimer and God both have their economies pretty well set up. Cave Shrine, once again, like Tomb of Heroes, is a map that does support economy well, especially when players start in cross positions like they are now. The rush distance is, I think, slightly longer in Cave for Shrine than it is in Tomb of Heroes at cross position. It's shorter at near positions, though. And... No, Rymark, you're right. I probably wouldn't be prosecuted, but I probably would... I would be still liable to get cease and desist requests and possibly other similar actions that basically are inconveniences. And I want to have full control over anything that might cause me inconveniences. Like, I don't want to be made inconvenienced because the streaming channel is doing stuff that I don't want it to do. Anyway, I'm going to have to bring that up with Twitch. Regardless, with... So God has stuff set up, and he has the Octos going in. He has the economy actually pretty nicely set up, in fact. Crown Ember, at a slight... He's at an economic disadvantage. He has two fewer RPs than God does, and... No real military advantage either. He's setting up pretty early for... Well, like three Minorc, not that early. Setting up still pretty early for getting Octopod, probably, and then Reef. No, he's setting up more RPs, never mind. So both players will be about even in economy, but God still has a slight advantage for timing. Anyway, with Octus coming in... Actually, Octus dealing quite a bit of damage to God's Akron, though I don't know how else is going to work. Probably not very. God, at his point in time, is setting up an Octo to defend against this. Actually, deprogening everything he has to defend against this. And Crown Aberrant setting up his Reef, setting up his further economy. So, trying to distract everyone, everything that God has, though... God... No, he's still taking damage. His Oct okay, this is bizarre. I think... No, he is losing his Akron, or will be very soon. Trying to run away with it. But the Octos being able to do what they can while the Akron turns. And... No, God has actually lost his Akron. He has no control over this point in time. He has to go back further in the past, but he does have an Octopod building up. And his deep regen units will be able to take care of the Octos. But having to spend on that Octopod, and now we'll need to reef. Otherwise, he's going to be liable to have that hurt again. And attacking... Cronamorous Akron, so Cronamorous Akron getting out of the way, getting back to base. We'll be able to heal up with Reese. However, God's still at an advantage. Even though he did spend that money on the Octopod, he still has an economic advantage, and he just doesn't have a tech advantage. That's the big thing. So, nice try by Cronamorous for the assassination, though. That was really clever. But not quite enough. Okay, apparently the as thing is a new Twitch thing. That's really bloody annoying. I'm going to have to talk to them. I'm going to have to make an email or something about that, ask them. Because if we're going to have ads, I might as well benefit from them. Because they do have partnership programs and such, as far as I'm aware. So I might as well benefit. Like, if there, if There's no choice. Anyway, with the Octo setting up here... So, God's got another Octo coming in for economy. Well, Cryonimate actually... No, Cryonimate has an economic advantage at this point. Cryonimate has managed to pull ahead a bit. Though, God has a lot more money in the bank, but God's not spending it. He could, though, and if he did, he would definitely have either economic or military advantage, depending on what he chooses to do. Well, Karin Abbott definitely going for a safer approach with this. Like having his Octopod for defense and everything else. God, a bit surprising, he's not patrolling with his Octopod. I mean, he doesn't have a reef set up yet, and Karin Abbott does. Karin Abbott had a reef from the very start. So yeah, Karin Abbott will be able to take care of this... As long as he takes advantage of his economic advantage better than God is, because God had a lot of money in the bank for a long time. So in that time, Cryonimer could have made quite a lot. And it looks like he did... Well, he made a fair bit. Though these QPRPs are clearly, are clearly quite new. So this is a little bit awkward. I think, like I said, both players still are smoking on their economy. Still, neither of them really interacting very much. However, God has much more QP coming in now. He's managed to convert his money in the bank into an economic advantage, so now Crown Abbott once again slightly on the back foot. And no advanced structures or... Oh, there we go. <laughs> About to say, no advanced structures. Well, there they are. Prove me wrong. Right at the time. And, oh, in case you're wondering... Okay, Remark's asking, 
if a time event if someone chronoports and if it's cancelled okay what happens is that when a chronoport when the time event goes over any point in time, you basically think of it as it goes over any point in time and checks if any units were meant to arrive there. So you send a chronoport to a target point in time. And that chronoport departures on the timeline, every time wave it checks if there's any chronoport departures whose arrival ends up where that time wave currently is. If there are any chronoport departures whose arrival ends up there, those arrivals are processed and then the units basically pop up. If there are no chronoport departures and there was an arrival, well then that arrival just gets removed because there's no chronoport departure that's tied to it. So it goes to that point in time and sees, oh, there's no chronoport departures linked at this point in time. Clear all arrivals here, or clear the arrivals that would be here. Only do the arrivals for the chronoport departures as if any previous arrivals didn't happen. I suppose it doesn't actually really help either. Basically, yeah, the, as far as I know, the chronoports are kind of stored in a global variable, or stored globally outside of all the time waves. But I'm not 100% sure, and even if I was, that would probably not be something I would actually be able to publicly talk about. But in, just in terms of the way the gameplay mechanics work, basically think of it as, if there's a chronoport departure on the timeline, then any, all the other time waves try to figure out which chronoport departures, if any, if any, map to any chronoport arrivals where they currently are processing. And if any do, they're processed. If any don't, then no chronoport arrivals are there. Only the ones that are there for any chronoport departures that are currently on the timeline are processed. And only chronoport, chronoport is the only case where that actually matters. And I mean, it might, it happens with undos as well, where undos, it'll actually mark that all the unit's orders are to be undone as the time wave passes along. But you don't notice that as much just because that's undoing orders rather than doing orders or having orders that you don't you see an arrival and then it gets removed. You don't see the orders in the timeline, so it's not as noticeable. Anyway, Crown Aberrant setting up quite a lot of base class units. It looks like he's actually setting a secondary progen triad. Probably gonna send that out to build up one of the expansions or one of the other bases. While God not doing any of that, God in fact very quickly getting chronoporting, and knowing God, he's probably gonna go for a permaclone strategy. Gonna try to get himself up probably pharopods or more cephipods. Permaclone those and then attack with a massive permacloned army. While, while Crown Aberrant is going more for conventional approach of getting a lot of base class units, probably like I said for progen triads, likely to send them, seed them across the map and just be a real nuisance in terms of having bases everywhere, which is what Grekham really should do. Grekham really should do that a lot more often, especially with the actual the domes being that much more powerful. It's viable now. But it looks like Crown Aberrant is setting up to do that, but actually hasn't gone and done that quite yet. And God has set himself up in the Implacable Pass, sending actually not Permacolon, just going straight for the Assault, seeing what Crown had further in the past, but will probably be undoing that Chronoport order completely. I don't see him keeping that. Then God... Actually, it looks like God's at a slight economic disadvantage at this point. Cranor has managed to pull back into the economy game, so both players are a little bit are basically even. But God having chronoporting is pretty big. I mean, Cranor getting that as well, so Cranor definitely prepping for a defense on that. But I don't know how long it'll leave before God actually manages to successfully permaclone this stuff, which is what I'm assuming he's trying to do. But it's hard to tell because he is actually going straight for assaults with that. He's not simply permacloning or not simply staying in his base, chronoporting, dechronoporting. Although he did undo some of the chronoports here. So he is definitely trying to permaclone. He's setting it up in a way that will allow for permacloning, but he's... He is also attacking, so he's definitely given away the fact that he has chronoporting. And Karnabert also getting chronoporting of his own. He has it by the 1140 mark, but since Karnabert is focused further in the past, he has done some chronoports, however, quite a few actually. But it looks like those are just for defense. And I'm a little bit surprised he's not going and using these base class units for progeneration triads. He's just using them for main attack force. Little unusual, but I suppose it kind of works. That... So basically, Crown Aberrant looks like he's setting up himself for defense, possibly also trying to do permacloning as well? That's... I mean, that's possible. Let's see, what is God up to right now? So God has maybe some permaclones coming in in the... 
at the immutable past edge. He does have some Chronoport still going back. But it looks like he's... Well, this Chronoport's staying, that's for sure. If that Chronoport's gone in the Impelible Past. There's no way to undo that for him yet. Or at all, really. It's falling in the Impelible Past. Chron Aberrant... No, Chron Aberrant is apparently... It looks like he is actually going for a permacloning of his own. Or not. No, he's assaulting directly. He's just built a lot of units. Interesting. So Chron Aberrant does not appear to be trying to permaclone. If he is, he'll probably be permacloning near here. But trivial permaclones like that are actually not possible. Like, you... The Chronoport won't depropagate in time for that to be a thing. Like if you if you were to cancel a Chronoport, jump away, and then let the next time wave come and stop it, and then next let the next time wave come and stop the propagation down here, I'm pr it's it's designed to avoid that being a, an actual event. It's designed to avoid that happening. But I'm not 100 percent sure if that will prevent it in all cases. There might still be ways around it because. Permacolony is basically made to be as hard as possible without... You can't make it totally impossible without breaking the way that... Chronoporting works at all and Paradox Resolution works at all. Because really, permacloning is just forcing Paradox Resolution into your favor when it comes to units not chronoporting properly. That's all it is. And forcing that... Forcing that means that you have... Obviously, pro the Paradox Resolution that the game already has. And if you don't have that Paradox Resolution... Where are these units going? Okay, apparently these these units are trying to send their comrades off the edge of the map, but that's impossible. So, Chronoport coming in, the very powerful assault. Chronoporting back from the looks of it to deal with this Akron here. And God, on the other hand, has to do some Chronoports of his own. Chronoporting, or building a bunch of Octopods instead, actually. Getting a bunch of Octopods for defense. Which should be very effective, but where are his Chronoports? One of his Chronoport arrivals is over here. But it's hard to tell if any Chronoport departures are over there. However, it doesn't matter. Chron Aberrant losing all of his units that he sent in to attack with. So this Akron is not going to be taking any damage at all. This Akron's not going down. Nothing's going to happen to it. This assault is basically useless. These Octopods doing a great job defending. So God, still nicely set up for defense. And we'll be probably chronoporting these guys back. And try to permaclone them, likely. And there are some of them already being chronoported back near Chron Aberrant's base. Patrolling around here, stopping any expansion attempts. Very nicely done. So, more Chronoports going back here for Chron Aberrant, however. Chron Aberrant, probably not going to be able to do much with them. And God has a really nice Octopod army set up. Going for a counterattack, and this counterattack probably won't be the end of the game. I think Chron Aberrant probably still has something up his sleeve. He still has enough money to build up more units and to get some defenses up and actually deal with this. But he doesn't appear keen to do so. He's setting up another Chronoport. Probably the Octos that we saw up here in the corner... And, well, if he is, they didn't chronoport in time. That's probably a cued chronoport by accident. And, destroying more of the octopods that were coming in, so God. Did he chronoport back? No, he's not chronoport back any more octopods. He's chronoport back more cephalopods, though. It looks like he is, in fact, doing some permacloning shenanigans. It's just really hard to tell, because permacloning kind of involves the chronoport departure being gone. And, yes, this looks like another chronoport arrival, so he does appear to be successfully permacloning with relative ease. That's actually kind of worrying. I have to look into how he does that, because that's... Permacloning shouldn't be easy. It really shouldn't. I think... Oh, I see what he's doing. Oh! Oh, okay, so he's doing exactly what I thought he, that might happen, which is... You chronoport, you let the departure propagate, you go back, you undo it, and then you make sure the departure doesn't... Or the lack of departure doesn't propagate. And the idea is by the time the departure gets off, then the arrival comes in, but because the time, the unplayable past is set up, it's set up so that if you had it, the undo propagate at the unplayable past edge, then the arrival would fall off the timeline, but in this case, the arrival isn't coming on. Yes, there, there's the arrival, and then the departure will go away because it's being undone. There we go. The departure's gone, it's so the arrival, but it won't go away because it's past, it won't be hit by another timeline before that comes up, which is, which basically means the only real solution would be to have Oh, great. The only real solution would be to increase the unplayable past by about 50 seconds. That's not a nice solution. That really is not a nice solution. But it seems like it would be the way to go. And, yep, yeah, there we go. God sending back all of his permaclones coming in to take care of Cryamorant. And Cryamorant appears to be trying to do a Chronoport bootstrap defense, but this is going to be wrought with paradoxes if he does. 
And not the easily controllable kind that God's been taking advantage of for the last 10 minutes. No, this is the hard to control kind that pretty much means that Kramer has a 50-50 chance to lose the game, and given that God is basically permacloning on top of all this, I don't see any way out of this. I think Kramer has lost this game. At least now we have figured out how God is doing the permacloning, though, which is kind of how I suspected it was happening anyway. Like I said, taking advantage of propagation not occurring until well after the departures into the unplayable past. So, this is interesting. Like I said, a little bit worrying, but definitely interesting. Like I said, it's a pretty trivial permaclone. The only hard part is making sure you time it with the time waves well enough so that the departure doesn't fall off before the arrival gets on. That's the only real trick. But yeah, it looks like Kramer realized what's going on, and there's one. I mean, his Acron's dead in any part of the playable pass at this point. And there we go, even more Octopods coming in. So, God just getting a massive free army. And I mean free, that's kind of the problem with Permacloning, is that these guys are all free. There's no additional cost to these guys. The Carnivore gets undone, and the units just pop out of nowhere. So yeah, that's... God has officially broken the game. Thanks a lot, God. That, look, look at all this. Look. Okay, sorry, this is near the unplayable past edge, so it's hard to really show. Go to the present and actually do this. Uh, she doesn't show it as well, does it? Because there aren't as many in the present, but yeah. That... That's kind of it. Yeah, this is... <sighs> Mark this day today, March 20... Actually, not March 23rd, because this game happened earlier. March 23rd is the day it was cast. The day that Akron was officially broken. Again. So, yeah, that's that's gonna have to be dealt with. That's a thing. This this is a thing now. I hope you enjoy learning how permacloning can be made trivial. And have a good night, everybody.